Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kavanaugh's Corner. I'm Andrew Kavanaugh. I want to say thank you for coming back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to be continuing my review series on the Alien uh, series. And at this point, we're at the second film in the series, Aliens. Now, Aliens, this one's going to be a doozy. Aliens is one of the best sequels of all time. James Cameron stepped in and decided that he wanted to do a... Uh, more action-oriented approach, but also have horror elements and sci-fi. So we have a, a sci-fi action horror film, which is really a wild amalgamation of different things, but it works so well in Aliens. Uh, Sigourney Weaver returns, and there's a great ensemble cast, uh, including Michael Bean uh, and Bill Paxton, another actor who we lost way too soon very recently, and his performance in this movie is unforgettable. But there's a lot of actors in this film that are just phenomenal. But it's James Cameron's direction that really just kind of just makes this movie. His direction is, is, in a word, riveting. And every shot in this movie is very purposeful. Like, I want to say, the whole film kind of goes by in the blink of an eye. And the movie is like over two and a half hours long. Especially if you're watching the director's cut. The director's cut is damn near three hours, and it is so well done. Uh, the movie is just phenomenal. Um, every action movie um, after this point, I guess, had to use some sort of rotating beacon light as well. <laughs> um, again, just like the first movie, every you know sci-fi horror film had to have a strobe light. After this one, every movie had to have a beacon light, I guess. I don't know what that's about, but, but Aliens... Uh, again, just improves on the first film and does it bigger and better. Uh, There's not as much scary horror. I mean, there are a few scenes in this movie, especially a scene including one of the face hugger aliens, um, that are really that at that part really still creeps me out, and it's genius how they did it. But the movie kind of ups the ante by having many, many aliens. It's like a hive uh, that the uh, main characters end up in in this film and of course some major mistake why they go they go they think they're doing a, a rescue mission but nope it actually ends up being a uh, complete trap and uh, they get surrounded by aliens very quickly and then the whole movie is basically about their survival but for whatever reason even though the plot to this movie is kind of minimal it is so exciting to watch and I think the movie very rarely gets you uh, lets you have like a, a, a time to kind of just breathe and much like how the first movie was very constrained and uh, restricted, this movie also has that. Only now, you know, there's more people and there's a lot more action in this film. And don't get me wrong, the first film is very tense and, and, and almost upsetting uh, at how stressful it is. This film here is like a roller coaster ride of emotions. You're scared, you're excited you're scared again. I mean, it's a wild, wild kind of movie. And again, there's more emphasis on action in this for, in this film. Um, but again, like I said, there's still some pretty scary moments that come about. Um, the nice thing about this film is not only do we see an evolution of the alien, because the queen alien is introduced in this film, and it shows how the whole alien like lineage is born, how there's like a queen that lays the eggs, the eggs have the face hugger, the face hugger impregs the, impregnates the person, and then the xenomorph comes out of the person and kind of like, you know, repeats the process. But basically, um, it's a wonderful idea that James Cameron came up with, and he really is the one that invented the lineage of the alien. But even better than that, in this movie, we see the evolution of Ripley, now, I didn't get a really chance to talk about Ripley too much in the first review, um, in the review of Alien. But, in this film, a Ripley is such a wonderful character, because not only is she kind of still recovering from the events of the first film, but when they find her, it's been many years since the first film has happened. She's been in kind of like cryogenically frozen type, you know, Walt Disney sleep, okay? And when by the time she was wo she's woken up, she's found out that her daughter has died, which is terrible. She can't can't do anything about it. 
and that she is technically a very old woman, but because of the cryogenically frozen sleep state she was in, she still looks the same age as she did in the first movie. Um, but I think that's also to do with how well uh, Sigourney Weaver has aged over the years. She's still not bad looking even today. But um, Sigourney's p performance in this movie is she starts off as a somewhat experienced person because she knows how to deal with the alien. But also she acts as like the voice of reason in this film where she's constantly telling people, get those guys out of there, get the hell out of there, run. You know, she's always the voice of reason. And I really like that in this film because it gives the film a depth that the first film didn't have. Because they didn't know what the hell they were dealing with in the first film. And this one here, Ripley has an idea of what this alien can do. And the fact that there's now hundreds of thousands of them is not a good thing. Um, and she knows it. However, the Marines, the space Marines in this film, don't. And that's kind of where the, the, uh, the conflict comes about. Uh, as well as the fact that they're all getting chased by, you know, bloodthirsty aliens. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I actually am much more fond of the director's cut of this version. I think the director's cut of this version, even though it is much longer, I mean, they add a lot of stuff back into this film. What they add in is a lot of material that adds to the story and to character development. And I think if you are making a director's cut of a film... If you're going to add stuff back in, it's got to be relevant to the story and it's got to add to the development of characters and the plot as a whole. And in the director's cut of this, we do get a lot more plot development and we do get a lot more character development in this. And we also get a chance to see what the colony is like before the aliens kind of infest everything. And you get to see Newt, kind of, which is a little girl in this film that uh, Ripley uh, attempts to rescue as the film goes on. But you get to see what she goes through um, and what happens to her parents. And in the theatrical version, you don't get that. So I kind of like that. A lot of people don't. I really like the, the, uh, the director's cut of this. The theatrical version is fine. I mean, the theatrical version of this movie is still a ride. I mean, it's still an amazing film. But the director's cut to me adds just a little bit more. And I think it makes for a better experience. Um, again... Aliens is yet another near-perfect film. It may be the best sequel ever um, in terms of uh, just quality and how it adds to the overall series. Um, James Cameron just, again, hit it out of the park with this one. And uh, it's just, it's a brilliant, brilliant film. And uh, I, I can't give it any less than a 5 out of 5. Again, it's another perfect rating from me. I think it's a near-perfect film. I absolutely love the way this film was shot. I love the acting. I love the special effects. Even though some of the special effects have not aged as well as the first film, funny enough, the first film has aged extremely well in terms of special effects. This one, uh, there's some rare projection stuff that looks a little hairy if you're watching it in high definition. But I gotta tell you, it's still a phenomenal film, and I highly recommend it. Uh, anyway, I'm Andrew Kavanaugh. Thank you for coming back to Kavanaugh's Corner. Tune in next time when we get the chance to look at David Fincher's Alien 3, a very polarizing film. And uh, we'll talk about that then. Good night.